everyone. This is Lam here. Today I'm not going to pour another black canvas. I'm just using the same footage because I'm using same color. So that's Craftsmark Metallic Purple, Craftsmark Purple Pearl, Craftsmark Pink Pearl, and that is Craftsmark Bright Gold, Liquid Tex Person Violet, and next is Craftsmark Loop Metallic, and Craftsmark Sea Mist Green Pearl. Now that's Anita's White Pearl. Next is Anita's Green Pearl. Then there is Folk Arts Malachite. I love this color. Next is Crafts Marks Gold. So these are all the colors I'm going to use. And I'm going to pour on this 12 by 16 white canvas. But I am still going to use a black base coat. Because the last one worked so well, I want to see if I can repeat the magic. So this is a Tessa's black that I mixed up from the night before. So I'm stirring it a little bit to make sure there's no lumps in it. And then I pour my pillow. And I'm going to do the same flip and drag thing again. Because it worked so well last time. Now, I'm going to use up my old paint from last night, so I'm dumping everything in the cup. But instead of putting all the colors in the same cup, I'm going to do two different cups. I'm going to put the lighter color, the pink and the purple in one cup, and then the green and the blue in another cup. So I'm going to do two flip and drag. I wanted to see how that works. And I specifically want to see how the green and the pink will and the purple will interact. See, because if I put them in the same cup, I layer them so that they never touch, so they won't be mixing. But if I do two different cups and I cross the flip and drag, then they will mix. I'll see if they will make mud. I hope not. So this is the first cup with the pink and the purple and the bright gold. So that is one. Adding more black around it. Thankfully, I have enough black. Okay, this is the second cup. I make sure I use a clean cup, not the same cup that I pour from from last time. So I'm putting the green and the blue colors and the regular gold into this cup. So I'm using up all my paint, so hopefully I wouldn't have to add more paint later on because with some of the techniques you do need to add paint. Like if I wanted to do some more cupping, cupping on black, you need to add color instead of subtracting. So I wouldn't be able to do that this time because I'm out of paint. But anyway, so. Here it is, I'm scraping the bottom of the cup, trying to get every last drop out of it. And then here it goes. Where, 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 where should I put it? There. Uh, a lot of blue there. So I'm trying to break up the blue a little bit. Okay, see, I cross the blue cup over the pink cup. So let's see how that goes. Then I look at that patch of blue and 
I really don't like it that much. I'm gonna torch it first, see if any bubbles would come up. And some of that is already looking good. Like that purple there is already looking good, but that blue is bugging me. So I use my cup and try to break that up a little bit, use my finger, drag it around a little bit. Okay, now time to add more black. Flow extender is very important if we don't want too much of the colors get tilted off. Now time to tilt and see what happens. I'm really liking that green pattern on the right, but that may not last. Ooh, barely, barely making it. This time the pattern is a lot more integrated instead of separated into different sections like the last painting, the black gold, and this one is... Well, it's interesting because it looks like it has like a pink and purple from the left and then a blue section and then a another pink and purple section and then green section is segmented like the colors seem to be separated but still there is some continuity in it like they don't look completely out of place and i'm certainly happy that there doesn't seem to be any mud so you see the green and the purple sections are right next to each other but there's no mud so that's good and Heather and I talk about it quite a bit, and we both believe that it is the glue in the pouring medium that is keeping the colors pure. So, as long as I can get it, I'll keep using my Mod Podge, but I think Elmer's glue and other PVA glues would do the same thing. Okay, now what to do next? I think I will do a string pull. So I take out my string and started putting it in circle and pull it around. So there is some white pearl in the blue and green cup, so that is the white that I'm taking out. And I like it, but I think it needs a little bit more. So I I'm doing another string pull again in circle, but this time on the opposite direction. And I'll see how that goes. Okay. Now this time is more like it. And I find string pole is a very good technique to utilize colors without making like, too big of a mess. And it, the resulting pattern is usually very pretty. Now, most people when they do string pole or chain pole, they would add colors either to the string or the chain, or they will add colors to the canvas. But that is for canvases that have a solid background. And in this case, I already have 
colors on the canvas. And what I'm doing is just trying to take out the colors from underneath because it's a flip cup, so there are a few layers of colors. So in this case, I don't feel I need to add more colors. Well, plus I don't have colors to add, but I could add colors if I did have, have paints left over, but I only do that when I need to add an outline to my string pole. And in this case, there are already strong outlines that is in the formation of the pattern. So all I need to do is to just follow the pattern and just string pole within the confine of those outlines. So I'm just accenting the patterns that is already there instead of making new patterns. So in this case, I don't need to add more colors. And I think it still looks pretty nice. Here you see, I am just following the natural outline. I see that patch of white there that I wanted to have some pattern, so I string pull there. And now the white has turned into leaves. So far so good. I think this is working rather well. So I just keep doing it, cut up more strings and keep pulling away. The only problem with string pull is that it's a slower process. It's not like the cupping. Cupping is very fast. But the string pole, you really need to be careful because the string is not as easy to control and sometimes it's too stiff. It depends on the kind of strings you use. And I just have some kitchen strings that you use to test the turkey or something. So that's what I'm using and that may not be the best one. At least it's not as soft as some other strings. But I've been using it and it's been working well. And I have also used ball chains before, the chain pole. And chain poles usually would give more definitive uh, lines in the pole, which is nice. However, the ball chains have a pretty big turning radius. And as you can see, I like to do detail works. Like some of my poles are pretty narrow and pretty tight. So the ball chains just don't have the flexibility to do that for me. So if I do like really big canvas, then I will use ball chain, but for a small canvas like this, this is a 12 by 16, it's not very big. So a lot of, of the details are pretty small. A lot of the corners are pretty tight. So I just use the string because it's more flexible. Okay, this one, it wiped out a lot of the colors and I don't have any more colors to add to it, so I just wing it and hopefully it will still turn out okay. And since it is on the side of the canvas and I really don't think it's too big of a deal and there are still some colors left. So if you look closely, you see it. And I don't think it looks too bad. So I do one more pull there. There, I kind of like it. Because everything else is already so vibrant, so saturated, so a little bit of uh, lighter color section wouldn't do much harm. Okay, so I'll 
just do maybe one more poll, and I think that should be it. Looks pretty good. Okay, just one small pole to fix that little section. And then touch up work. The middle bottom part there that I did this initial circular string pose, that turns out to be looking like you know, some leaves that's all curled up, like the inside of a cabbage. And then like that. So I just think it needs a little bit more definition. So that's what, I was, that's what I'm doing. Just adding a little bit of definition either with my fingers or with a little ball stylus tool. And you can use a bamboo stick as well, just anything that is pointy. So just Add a few lines here and there. Yeah, I like fixing little things that no one noticed. Okay, that's done. I'm happy with it. So let's do the final torch. And this is it. This is the finished painting. Look at all those details. Look at the cabbage! Wow! I had no idea it would turn out like this. And look at those nice patterns created by the string pole. Isn't it gorgeous? And all those cells and lacings. Look at all that. Even that black section doesn't look too bad. It has some nice subtle hints of colors. Now here's the dry result. Look how shiny it is. And it has all the details intact. It dried perfectly. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this, please like and share. Thank you my subscribers for all your support. You have a great day, and I'll see you next time.